<laughs> Don't forget me. Alan for a three. Yes! Happy New Year, everyone. May this 2021 give us a better year and hoping that this pandemic will be over soon. As for my first episode this year, I will be sharing with you a game between Great Taste Instant Milk and Pure Foods in the 1988 PBA All-Filipino Conference, which happens to be the debut of Alvin Patrimonio. So let's all watch it. Hi, Dick. Three points. And Tito Varela will be calling uh, the violations against uh, some of the, the guys he used to play with. Yes, very definitely. Philip Cesar, Atoy Ko, Fabiosa. Here's Atoy. A little too strong and Mon Fernandez blocks the rebound. That'll be an interesting development with uh, Tito Varela. But he did quite well in his debut as a referee. He was right on top of every play. Here's Atoy Ko working against the exciting Giorgio Lastimosa. Ooh, a lot of shoving and pushing inside. We have a foul on J.B. Yango. Yango. Readily acknowledging that personal foul, the first of the ball game. Well, great taste is already trying to set a pattern. They're really pushing the ball up the court quickly against uh, Pure Foods. Trying to get in before they set up their defense. They know they have a big team, and uh, the way you beat a big team is by pushing up the court before those big guys can get down the court. Arnie Twadles got just got the, uh, the first basket of the evening. Here's Padim Israel, who uh, Tim pointed out, played so well. Yango also played well in that victory against San Miguel last Sunday. Padim, here's Jojo, hang time and a foul. Twadles guilty of the first foul of his first personal foul as we take another look. Here's the replay. Uh, Lastimosa trying to penetrate like he should. Twadlis was caught standing there, but he, 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 either got, he either has to get right in front of Lastimosa and take the charge or step away from him altogether. As it was, he uh, kind of got him in the half part of the body of Lastimosa. Giorgio, a consistent foul shooter. He uh, is relatively... And he is very consistent from that uh, distance. Yeah, he gets he gets a lot of practice because he gets so many free throws. <laughs> in fact, in that game against San Miguel, perfect. 12 out of 12. Twadless against former teammate Mon Fernandez. And I do believe the franchise will get the personal foul. Shin pattern to his assistant, so he'd like to concentrate on playing while he is on the floor, of course, and leave the changing of players to his assistants. Uh, Chris Kalilan, as well as Eli Capasho. Well, one thing that Patrimonio will mean to this team is that Juan Fernandez will be able to spend a little bit more time on the bench coaching rather than playing because uh, Patrimonio is a, a, a good, a, a great caliber player. On, almost on par in Juan Fernandez. Giorgio <laughs> leans in, offensive foul. Somehow, with the way Giorgio plays, Somehow inevitable, he's going to get one of those calls in the game. Right. Uh, I think the PBA is getting a little bit wise to JoJo's spin moves, and they're starting to jump out on that spin, picking up the offensive foul. Bernard hands off to Arnie Twadless. Philip Cesar peeps inside, and the ball is taken away by the white shirts, rather, of Pure Foods Hot Dogs. Padim. Ooh, he faked a shot. JoJo goes up. Three men on him. One more time. Yes, sir. It'll be interesting to watch uh, how many inside shots uh, Pure Foods gets throughout the game without that big uh, dominating center that Great Taste has, that Great Taste is without. Fabiosa's 15-footer. Oh, on target. Bernard with his first two points. Here's Mon Fernandez. Fernandez tries to shuffle against Philip Sessa. That's a double dribble by Ramon. If there is one player who knows how to deal with Ramon Fernandez, it's got to be Philip Cesar. They've seen each other a lot of times throughout the years, that's for sure. Let's see if they don't set up toilets on the uh, weak side again. 
Fabiosa sees an opening dribbles around the ultra <laughs> finds the hoop as well Fabiosa with his second field goal hit one earlier from 15 feet time remaining 8 and 50 opening period earlier tonight a big win by Alaska over the RP squad 130 to 108 if you just joined us on your screens just be uh, got a look at the team manager of great taste so I go now as we watch for him Israel Ooh, blind pass to Solis Perfect execution there by Padim Israel. He saw Philip Cesar ma measuring up. Philip was trying as decoy, but uh, Padim saw it and did that shovel pass to Lastimosa. Atoiko, yes, continues to sizzle. Faulty inbound by the Pure Foods Hot Dogs results in a turnover. That's Ooh. one thing about being a player coach is that sometimes you try to do too many things while you're on the co court. You feel like you should be controlling the game. And uh, sometimes you force a few things, you have a few turnovers, and Moen has to, has to learn just to settle down a little bit. Jorski does the same thing. He tends to force it a little bit too much also, as well as Norman Black. Atoiko looking inside, 17 on the shot clock, Wadless. Yango doing a volleyball toss, ran out of real estate. Great weak side help by uh, Yango that time. He saw the pass going over, he lost him also, was funny in Wadless. Saw the pass go over the head, and Yango quickly uh, reacted to it. Atoy bouncing it over to Sonny Kabatu flying without the basketball and here is Padim Israel. Here's Solis. Three-point country. No try. Padim to Jojo. Short. It will be outside for the Great Ace Instant Milk Masters. There's going to be an injury. I think I'm on Fernandez. The doctor has gotten up and walking over to him. Got a finger in the eye, maybe. Play continues nonetheless, but uh, no official timeout was called. Referee Bailey Desma pointing out that he had indicated that he had issued a whistle or made a whistle. We shall try to see what is wrong with Mon Fernandez as we take a second look. Here we go. You see, uh, about to go up and oh, hit him right in the nose with his arm. Incidental contact, but uh, that hurts when you get hit in the nose. It doesn't do that much damage, but it makes your eyes water, your nose water, and everything. Yeah, but it goes away quickly. But he's out of the ball game now, and Cordonier has come in. Great Taste has contended that no official timeout or injury timeout was called. However, referee Bailey Desma, who was under the western basket, pointed out that he had made a whistle. Yeah, it was Tito Varela. I didn't realize that, uh, I didn't see the injury and didn't know that there was a call. Meanwhile, replacing Juan Fernandez was Jerry Codiniera, and there was a scramble for the rebound. The loose ball foul has been spotted. Codiniera is charged with his first personal. 10 to 6 is our count. Four point lead enjoyed by the defending champions of the All Filipino Great Taste Instant Milk. I think people tend to, to forget that. that. Great Taste is a defending champion here, and they have a lot to prove, so. I wouldn't take this team too lightly. You have yes. all these veterans, great players. They can mesh and play well. They have a very good chance of repeating. Solis, in that game against San Miguel Beer, hit three out of five, and he's up and raring. Three-point country is where he makes a living, aside from the other good things he can do on the floor. Twadless hooks it inside. Cesar looks underneath and says, this territory is mine. You know, it's funny how good Solis is and how much he's traveled. This is his third team in only a year. Um, he came out with uh, Alaska first, and Alaska traded him to Shell, and then Shell traded him to Pure Foods. And I was talking to Norman Black one night, and he said he couldn't believe how many times he was traded. He knew he was a great player just from watching him in the amateurs. And Solis hits point six and seven. Meanwhile, you know, talking about the consistency of Al Solis, he also hit three out of three from two-point distance. And also three out of four from the line in that game against San Miguel Beer. Well, he, he, he picks his point, he picks his spots very, very well. He knows when to take the shot, when to pass. A good, a good point guard knows that. And he's a good point guard. Everybody uh, is still all over Ramon Fernandez. They're checking out the situation of Mon there. Uh, our man on the ball, Romy Quintanar, is there. Maybe we can get an update from Romy later on. Top of the key, the fortune cookie. They have 17 on the shot clock. Three-point salvo. Kaboom! 
Atoy Ko has been playing some really great basketball for about the middle of the uh, of the open conference on. He's really gotten his rhythm back. I think he feels strong on his knee and he's he's really setting up well and getting good shots. Looking a lot like the Atoy Ko of uh, old. We've got a foul. Caleb Cesar on your screens. And the foul is slapped against Philip as we move into our first timeout. Very much our man of the ball, Romy Quintanar. JB uh, Yango just hit a jumper from the left side of the baseline and the applause in the background because Alvin Patrimonio will be making his entrance in just a short while. Prior to the jump shot of Yango, there was an exchange of misses from both sides of the floor. Meanwhile, Cesar blocks the rebound. Quadles. Oh, yes, sir. Beautiful move by Trotless. He recognized Padim Israel. Padim, a good defensive player, has been on the all-defensive team for a number of years. Here's the replay. He took Padim down the Clive side of the court and leaned into him once Padim was moving. And put up the shot. We have a timeout. We'll be back. For my first year here in the PBA, 1986, she was a familiar face, and it seems that uh, she did not... Uh, come so much. I don't think she came in uh, 1987, but she's back here at the Ultra. Welcome back, Chris. Who do you think she came for? Alvin or Jojo or or Cordenera? <laughs> Definitely not for the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> 18 to 13 is our official count. Patrimonio is on the floor, and that is the big story. In fact, uh, three big rookies are there on the floor right now. Lastimosa! Almost hitting the deck. Uh, hit the deck. Hitting the table, that is. He did hit the table. Fabioso was there. Checked right away if Giorgio was okay. Here's the replay. You see them both hustling for the basketball. Giorgio just slips and goes right into the board. Wow, look at that table fly. He ran and lucky he didn't get hurt there, but he seems to be all right, up and running. I think the table was scared to bump into the... <laughs> Those strong legs of Giorgio Lastimosa. I was more concerned about the table. <laughs> 18 to 13, 4 and 24. The defending champions of the Great Taste Instant Milk Masters up against the newest kid on the block. The runners up in the open conference, the Pure Foods Hot Dogs. Cesar is in the corner. Quadless, nothing there. Bodinero nearly snaring that rebound. A loose ball foul has been spotted. How many times do you see it when a player misses a shot he thinks he should have made and uh, then gets frustrated and goes for a rebound he shouldn't go after and picks up the loose ball foul? Or Happens all the time. Or a steal, uh, yeah. you know. Happens all the time. Human nature. Stretch by Jerry Codinera. Great defense by Joel Santos that time and Jerry, Jerry Codinera just beat him. Just got a glimpse of the face of Mont Fernandez as to where that, um, where the medication was applied, top of his uh, eyebrow. Here's Cesar banging bodies inside. Israel is there. This ball is mine, he says. Pierfoot is really starting to show their domination this last couple of times down the court in the middle. Really shutting it down. The big guys are getting up off the floor and, and contesting all those shots. Somehow you feel that Great Taste might just be a donut with a big hole in the middle, exactly, Tim. Exactly, I read that. <laughs> Alvin. Everybody's waiting for Alvin's first two points, but he has other things to take care of. Oh, there's a lot of pressure on Alvin right now. Yeah, I know he's real jittery. Legs are probably shaking. But of course the Great Taste veterans would like to say, let's give him a lesson too. Oh, yeah. Solis is guilty of the foul, Tim. is first. It's tough when you come into a league with uh, great expectations. It's always that potential tag, and, and it's tough to handle right at first. You just got to give him some time. The fans have to be patient. Great taste has been uh, pegged at 18 for quite some time now. The score, in fact, has been pegged at 18, uh, uh, and I think we came out of a timeout at 18-13. Meanwhile, Solis banging bodies with Bernard Fabiosa. Action continues. Quadlis is at the timeline. Out to Atoico. The shuffle against Patrimonio. The lean-in won't drop. And Giorgio patiently waits for his teammates. Oh, great play by Fabiosa. Boy, what hustle he has he is displayed his last two times down the court. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Seth. No, it's all right. He got excited. You, you were about to say that uh, Fabiosa, uh, as if in his mind, he knew where Giorgio would do that crossover dribble at the exact moment. And he remember earlier in the game, he picked up the offensive foul because Giorgio was doing that spin. Twadles shooting against Patrimonio and scoring. And Twadles is off to a good start with nine points. 
Well, Twardless is one of the best players in the PBA and uh, posting up down low. He has a big body, he likes to spin and uh, do some fakes. And he has always claimed the old Filipino as his tournament. Giorgio hits the deck and that will be a foul against Bernard Fabiosa. Knee contact according to referee by Ledesma. That's an interesting matchup, uh, Fabiosa and Lastimosa. Uh, looks like coe has been guarding Solis and Fabiosa has been guarding Lastimosa. Uh, Fabiosa poses some problem for Lastimosa because he's so quick and uh, he, he can use his feet to get in front of Lastimosa. But I wouldn't be surprised if later on in the game you start seeing some plays designed for Lastimosa to get the ball down low in the post-up situation. Don't forget, Adidas is the official outfitter of the PBA. <laughs> That's Solis' second three-point shot. Uh, boy, he is really, really coming to the league and really taking advantage of that three-point shot. As if he was shooting a foul shot. Making a career out of it. <laughs> Don't forget that Solis is one of three owners of the PBA record among locals as far as the most number of triples are concerned. Of course, Sonny Jaworski and Ricardo Brown, the other two. Inbound from the baseline. A minute and 46 remaining in this quarter, the first. Patrimonio gets the rebound. Rodinera almost did not get it. Ball kept alive, however, picked up by great taste. Here's Twadlis, tries to zigzag, turns, twirls, passes off to Bernard. Short! Ooh, what a big rebound by Alvin Patrimonio! There we go, there he already displayed his really magnificent, magnificent uh, skill. Here's the replay. Watch him go up, left-handed, bring it down. Some big power right there. Perhaps a shadow of things to come. And now, Baby the Lupin will try to inject some more excitement into the ball game by putting in Alan Kedik, who has just replaced Atoiko in the Great Taste lineup. You know, a really interesting statistic about Alan Kedik. He was number one in the scoring in the uh, Open Conference and only 18th in minutes played. Really tells you how much he can, he can fill it up when he comes in. Great Taste was shouting for a three-second violation. Kaidik leading the break. Quadless to Kaidik. Well done. Well, well done. You're right. We have some of the most popular players on the floor right now. Exactly. Alan Kaidik, uh, Philip Cesar, Solis, and of course, Patrimonio and Jojo. Corinera. <laughs> Name the whole ten players out there. Solis. That would have brought the house down. But he could not keep the ball down. Fabiosa, he is everywhere. Cesar, fall away on target. And the veterans are being challenged by the presence of these rookies. Somehow you get the, you get the feeling that Pierre Fuji is winning this game. You look up at the score and you see great taste up by six points. Fadim for a three. <laughs> Only nine seconds left in the period. Great taste is in front. Don't be misled by the excitement that's currently being uh, shown on the floor. Twadless's attempt. Oh, that could have counted. And the first quarter ends. Cesar is there. Kaidik is there. Kabatu together with Santos, as we pointed out earlier. While on the other hand, the hot dogs will have Patrimonio, Solis. Ubaldi is inside for the first time. Codinera together with Israel. Uh, Joel Santos actually was came in a little bit earlier. Uh, uh, about three minutes left to go in the oh, first yes. quarter. But uh, we got too concerned with Patrimonio. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, good defensive jam by Santos. And Did telling you and me, hey, I'm here, guys. Yeah. Don't forget me. Alan for a three. Yes! <laughs> it's going to be a shootout tonight. You know, you can really feel the intensity. It's like, uh, even though Patrimonio, you know, just like both teams are out to prove something. Uh, Undoubtedly. The Feels like a playoff game. Yes. The defending champions have to prove that they are still of championship caliber. While the rookies, Patrimonio, Santos even, trying to show that they are, they deserve a place in this league. Santos playing a little more aggressively now compared to his first game. And got a foul as well. Uh, excellent play by Santos. He, he recognized that Ubali was on him. There he goes. See the switch. Ubali, a small man, is on him. He goes right to the basket right away. Gets the foul and the extra point, the extra free throw. Maybe the Lupin during the season uh, of the break between conferences was really scouting for that big man he could add up to his lineup. Well, what with the continued absence and the 
loss of the services of Abe King. So he really had to look for that big guy. Joy Carpio is also out for the season uh, team, at least for the All Filipina, because of that injured knee. Mm -hmm. And that really hurts him. Uh, he's a big guy, he can shoot outside. Opens up the middle for everybody else. By the way, Mon Fernandez is back on the floor. Uh, he replaced Henry Cotinera. Lau. Yes, and Henry Lau replaced Solis to give uh, Solis a chance to catch his breath. And for Henry Lau to do his own thing. Meanwhile, illegal defense has been spotted by referee Tito Varela. Actually, that was a break for great taste because uh, uh, Henry Lau had the ball in a good position to do something with it, whether to pass for the assist or go up for the basket. And the call was called. The Milk Masters were slapped with a warning. They're in front, 29 to 21. They're playing steady ball compared to the other side. Maybe just a little more exciting, but Great Days is playing steady ball. And are allowed, 15-footer, no, no, no. And Santos playing with a little uh, more intensity tonight, Tim. Mm -hmm. Kabatu, oh yes, sir! Boy, everybody's getting the act for Great Days. You think of Kai Dick, Cesar, Fabiosa, and Co. but Antoine, but look at Kabatu, Santos, and you're really getting into the game. Alvin. First oh. shot. Well, that one's tucked away in his belt now. Now get over that initial nervousness of his first shot. Sonny Kabatu sets up Kaidek. Yes! And Alan has a hot hand. Already with seven points. Oh. Wasted opportunity here. Simon Fernandez hesitates for a moment. Goes to Alvin Patrimonio. One-hander. Bingo! I was just going to say that's not a good play by Kabatu to throw the ball in to, uh, on his side of the court and save the ball. But as it is, Great Taste was able to recover, but yet Patrimonio still had that great uh, one-handed jump shot. Here's Pido Harencho. Bouncing it over. Inside. And big block. Big block on the shot of Santos by Patrimonio. Fernandez hooks it inside to Ubalde. Yes! There it was. Great pass by Mon Fernandez. Meanwhile, Capacho has just come into the ball game to replace Padim Israel. It is 33. To 25, Great Taste is in front, short on the foul shot by Freddy Hubalde. Again, I, I, I hate to beat a dead horse, but it still seems to me that Pure Fuji is winning this game, and I still look up and I'm really surprised to see them up. But that's the reason why, Alan Kai Dick right there. And that's uh, two three-pointers and, uh, and a jump shot from the corner. Two triples already, as Tim pointed out. Fernandez released the ball. He was off balance. Patrimonio. And now, the story we were trying to create at the, at the top about the big inside game of Pure Foods now that Patrimonio is around. Well, I just asked another big guy. You, you concentrate on Fernandez or Cordonera, and there's another guy coming from the weak side to get the rebound. Makes it that much more difficult. But again, great taste is winning this ball game. They're up by nine points. They're playing some real excellent ball, some real excellent ball right now. Capacho. Fernandez probing inside. Bubalde. He is slowly but surely also getting back into form, Tim. Yeah, like we talked about earlier in the first game, uh, again, that man-ball relationship. Alan Kaidik lost sight of the ball, and Hurbali is able to slip in there and uh, get a good pass underneath. And that is the challenge to the defense, Tim, working with those two variables. Abatu. It's up, and we have color underneath. Kabatu was slapped with the offensive foul. No, I think there was a foul call before it on uh, Capacho. We'll see. We'll see what the call is. Let's see if the one referee doesn't overrule the other one. No, here we're going to overrule it. Let's they, take a second look, Tim. There's the foul over here to the left. You saw uh, away from the ball. The call was made by the referee who you cannot see on the other side of the court. So they're going to overrule that right now. I believe the foul 
the earlier foul you want to yeah. say was uh, will actually be enforced, but so everybody's moving down to the great to the pure food side. Anyway, we'll let the referee sort it out. To see what they come up with. Yes. As you saw on the slow-mo, there were two incidents actually that almost happened almost simultaneously. In fact, uh, our attention, of course, your attention also was on that uh, on the leather. As we take another Here look. Here we go. Here we go. Well, we missed the foul. There's the foul twice over there. Now you see the referee and the, your screen calling the foul, but on the other side of the court, the, the referee comes into your screen right there. He called it also. Let's see what they're going to say. See if they announce it over the speaker. <laughs> So they give technical fouls to those two players who were there at the low post, Tim. And they're going to give a foul to Kabatu, an offensive foul. So the, apparently the offensive foul occurred before the push of the technical foul on the opposite side of the court. And they're allowed inside to Alvin Patrimonio! What an auspicious start by this young man. Well, you can see that developing. Uh, Patrimonio put a, uh, a back screen on uh, Jarencio, then he went to the basket, rolled to the basket, got the pass underneath from Hubali. Hubali did a good job of finding him underneath. Paul and Capasio, but what has kept great taste in front has been the sniping of Alan Kaidik. Jarencio, he can score as well. Actually, great taste just shooting as a team very, very well so far in this second quarter. Panarolao orchestrating. And Mike Moya connects again and got a foul. Foul on Pido Arancho as we take another look. Well, you can see that what Baby DeLupan has done. He has brought Ramos out to, to bang uh, Patrimonio around, maybe get him off his rhythm. Welcome him to the PBA. But as yet, it hasn't worked. Uh, Patrimonio has refused to be intimidated, and he's still going straight to the basket. We knew Patrimonio was going to be good, but I don't think anybody knew he'd be this auspicious. 13 to 5 blast by the Pure Foods Hot Dogs in the last few minutes. And meanwhile, we have a foul spotted by referee Tito Varela against Hannah Ralao. And they're not going to give him the continuation, they're going to get the ball out of bounds. You were so right when you pointed out earlier, Tim, that this game feels just like a playoff game. In fact, close to the championship as well. A lot of intensity. A lot here's, of intensity. Yes, and here's Cristobal, Tim, working he's, against Ubalde. He's caught. Alan Kaidek gets free. Oh, the first one he's missed. Fernandez says, wait a minute. Here's Patrimonio crossing the center line. Tries to shuffle. Tries to bring it in, and there's... Somebody reaching in could be by Cristobal. Uh, now, one thing Patrimonio is going to have to be very careful of doing is that he doesn't go out here and dominate the game too much because his, uh, his teammates are going to be start standing around, maybe get a little resentful that they're not getting the ball. So, two-sided sword for uh, Patrimonio here in this first game for him. Fernandez was begging for the ball, and Cabatu said... I am guilty of the foul, sir. Yeah, he reached in. A silly foul by Cabatu. He's got to watch his fouls. He's got to be able to dominate that middle. We have a timeout. We'll be right back. Fernandez faked three people into the air. Missed it, but Patrimonio got it. Arancho guilty. No red. Let's do that again. It's Patrimonio guilty of the foul on the drive of Pito Arancho. His first personal. Let's take another look. Here we see it. You can see Arencio uh, got away with a little bit of a walk there. He slid his pivot foot. And then the foul occurred after the walk. But the referee caught the walk on Patrimonio. Ramos moves out and Philip Cesar reports back in. Don't forget KP, the official basketball shoes of the PBA. That was an interesting ploy, I think, uh, going back to Ramos being into the ball game. I think DeLupin wanted to go out and let him intimidate Patrimonio. All. Patrimonio a little bit with Ramos guarding him, but didn't face Patrimonio a bit. Kept going strong to the basket, going strong to the boards. It is 40 to 36. The instant milk masters in front. Playing coach Mon Fernandez shoots over Cabato. Nothing there. And Harancho looking behind. And that's what he wanted to do after all. Up. Referee Ledesma indicating 
You have to move back, Mr. Henderlau. <laughs> Even blocked the pass himself. Well, referee Ledesma was a former basketball player himself. Obalde. Obalde has six in the contest, trims down that great taste lead to just two with 5.46 left in the second quarter. Turnovers beginning to affect the great taste offensive thrust. That's, that's correct. The, the last two times down the court, they've made real silly passes. Uh, passes that shouldn't have been made in, at all in the first place. And this is what they can ill afford against uh, Pure Foods. Pure Foods feeds off turnovers. They like to get out in the running game, get the big men down the court and get them on mismatch situations. Twadles has returned into the ball game, replacing Cristobal. Capasha trying to sneak it inside. Was not successful. There is a foul spotted on Capasha. Again, we go back to that. Capasha uh, made a bad pass, tried to, get it, tried to make up for it right away. Picked up a silly foul. Pido Harencho. We're going to try to set up by Dick. Yes, sir. Front rims. You can tell Alan was a little bit off his rhythm that time. The pass by Ramon Fernandez was intercepted by Kai Dick, and in an effort to get it back, Ubalde guilty of his second personal foul. Update on the team fouls, both are carrying 16 fouls apiece here on the second canto. Kai Dick is a rhythm shooter. He likes to get it on a certain rhythm and put him up. You could tell that last shot, he didn't have his rhythm. Patrimonio paid dearly for that. He reached in over Twadles, and Twadles, the great low post player that he is, cashed in. Here's Capascio, probing inside. Goes to Alvin Patrimonio. Cesar watching him closely. Alvin tries to pump. Can't get up into the air. Capascio loses control. Oh. The quick hands of Enerolao. Gets it over to Capascio. Could not ring the bell. And there is a foul. Could be a foul on Capascio. Pito Varela first pointed towards the uh, great taste basket, but Cavato got a hold of him and, and threw Henry out to the, to the floor. Third personal foul by Cavato. Penalty. Great taste. 17 fouls. Cavato plucks it away. Harencho on a foot race with Henry Alao. Good fake. Gets Rubalde flying like an eagle and gets the bucket as well. Things are starting to change around a little bit. The uh, great taste team is now picking up a few of those uh, loose balls and making the turnovers. You know, the great taste fans inside the Coliseum are not as vocal, not as many, but they are screaming their hearts out. Ubalde, back shot, won't drop. And here's Cesar. Long pitch. It's going to be Alaska, uh, great taste's ball. That was the first game, Mr. Cole. <laughs> Alaska won earlier <laughs> over the national squad, 130 to 108. That was actually my cue to remind them of what happened in the first game. Okay, Fernandez moves out. Cordillera will come back in. Both benches are really reared up and geared up for this game. Quadles got Patrimonio flying. Went on a fishing expedition. Big fish, second foul on Alvin Patrimonio. That's a tough matchup for Patrimonio, uh, Quadles. Uh, Quadles is a tough matchup for anybody down low. But... Uh, one thing Alvin has got to do, he's got to stay on his feet when uh, Twadles gets that uh, pump pick. What is the key to the turn of Twadles, especially at low post? Is it his positioning or is it his first motion? Well, one thing you have to remember about Twadles is he's got a big body and uh, a big rear end. And he knows how to get his position where he wants to get on the court. The other thing is, is that he has a really quick spin to the basket and he'll also have a good up fake. And if you go up on your up fake, he knows how to lean into you and, and, and uh, get that fish for that foul. Even though he initiates the contact, normally the referee will call it the other way. So you out there who want to play low post, take a close look at the way Arnie Twadles does his low post game. Oh, great steal coming in from Henner Alau who stretches. You know, that move was beyond description. He went up right up against uh, Joel Santos, who's about 6'5". 
It is a four-point great taste advantage. Twirl, and th that's a closer look on what Twadless does so well, as you pointed out, Tim. Yes, and again, he did that spin, did the up fake, and he got people up in the air, but there's going to be a legal defense uh, one, called on Pure Foods. That's one apiece for both teams now. Next one for either team will be a technical foul throw. 44 to 40, great taste, up by four. Momentary hush here at the Ultra. Everybody was <laughs> looking for the basketball. It will stay on the blue side of the floor. With 20 seconds left on their shot clock. They have enough time to set up. Here's Twadless and Kapasha. There was a shot for her. Behind, behind, behind. Arnie wasn't able to hear that. Patrimonio bangs into the protection under the basket. And there is a deliberate foul spotted by referee by eyes. Arnie Twadless. Guilty of that foul. Here we go. A little bit of a late whistle. We'll see it. He goes up. And he rolls over the back of Arnie Twadless. And now Twadless continues to pursue his case with referee Bayais. But it won't change a thing. No, it won't change a thing. He's going to give Alvin Patrimonio two shots, which he normally would have gotten anyway. But Twadless has got to settle down. He's an important ingredient to this team. He's playing very, very well up to this point. Alvin Patrimonio played a total of 20 games in the Philippine team's PBA stints in 86 and 87. On those 20 games, 13.8 points per ball game. Almost 50% of his shots. You have to consider he takes most of his shots uh, up close. Nine rebounds and at least one block shot per game in those 20 games. Cesar. Quadless. Quadless is so exceptional, especially in that low post area, whether coming off an offensive rebound, Tim. Yeah, he just... Again, it's that big body of his. He really knows how to use it. Really knows how to position himself. We have referee Ledesma saying there is a foul. No, legal defense. Oh, illegal yeah. defense. Thank you very much, Tim. And that will be a team. And a timeout has been called by Pure Foods. Very, very true. It's so much different. Uh, watching the game live than it is on TV and uh, if anybody ever has a chance to come over here and watch it live they ought to come over especially in the old Filipino and catch our great Filipino athletes do their thing on the hard court Tim no offense intended of course <laughs> <laughs> no no offense nothing uh, taken but look, Chris really had really good things to say there yes really and, good things to say and now uh, Romy great job on that blitz interview and now our score stands at 46 to 42, a four-point advantage, still enjoyed by great taste. And here's an interesting point. Pure Foods has not tasted the lead in this ballgame. Blue ball, according to referee Bayais. Allen had a chance to go up with his right hand that time for a layup, but he's left-handed, and he got a little bit awkward and had to take the jump uh, pass it off. But there he takes a jump shot and buries it. Alan Kaidik already with 12 points, 10 of them coming here in the second period of play, which still has 2.08 to play. Hanaralao, posting up. Almost the same size as Arancho, but he drove it in. When I first saw Arancho play, I, I, I thought to myself, he, he reminds me a lot of Hanaralao. And now here they are playing against each other. Three-point bomb, no explosion. Pass off to Kay to so I'm sorry, that is Santos. Hang time. And there's a foul on Hubalde. Santos is getting an awful lot of playing time. He got a lot of playing time against the RP team, but I thought that was because uh, maybe DeLupin felt comfortable with his lead and he wanted to get him some uh, experience. But coming into this ball game, he's got an awful lot of playing time so far here. Playing some real quality minutes. You know the arrival of these great amateur stars and as they continue to move into the pro ranks, this is the future of the PBA, Tim. Yes, it is. And it's not a bad future, looking at it. It looks pretty rosy. They're getting taller and taller and taller and tougher. And stronger, much, much stronger. Yes, sir. 49-44. Greatest continues to 
be in front. Again, Pure Foods has not tasted the lead. And Heather Allow has seven points in the contest, Tim. Yeah, a little bit of a surprise. You wouldn't have picked him as being one of the stars of the game, but he has been so far. Now, Patrimonia's assignment is Arnie Twadless's post, low post game, but Arnie puts it up nonetheless, nothing there. Henry Renau did a real good job of dropping off uh, Fabiosa, forcing the, the pass that uh, he could come back and help out with. Capascio, a gutsy move underneath the basket, brings the hot dogs within just a point. We've had two deadlocks, that was centuries back, way back at two and four. And we have an offensive foul against Fabiosa, which he readily admits. You know, the, in uh, Tuesday's game, I kept saying that ball looks awful slippery to me when I was sitting and watching in the stands. It, did you see how shiny it is? It looks like it kind of reflects off the light. That usually means it's a little bit slick. And again, uh, Fabiosa lost the handle there. They're using newer balls now than they were in the last conference. So somehow it does affect your dribble, your grip of the ball. As there is the penetration by Capasha. The guards are doing exceptionally well, and Pure Foods jumps into the lead, Tim. I think that's for the first time, too, and uh, with 13 seconds left in the quarter, or in the half. Wallace has got to be careful to get three seconds. Hey, Dick. Cesar, no. And the hot dogs enjoy a one-point lead as they head for the locker room. We'll be back. So halftime score is uh, 50 to 49, lamang po ng one point of Pure Foods. Kung mapapansin niyo dito sa game, marami pong match-ups na na-develop. Uh, nandyan yung Jarencio at saka Hideralaw, yung Fabiosa at Lastimosa, Atoy Ko at Solis, syempre yung Fernandez at Cesar, abang-abang talaga yan. Uh, pati po yung uh, Kaidi Capacio and most especially yung Tuadles Patrimonio. Dahil nabanggit ko nga sa inyo na first game po ni Alvin ito, kaya uh, ang ganda ng impact niya doon sa Pure Foods team, kaya gumanda yung laro nila nung towards the end ng, ng second quarter. So, panoorin po natin itong second half and I assure you, napakaganda pong laban ito. He's done a good job. He's come out here with a good uh, uh, pre-game uh, uh, strategy. And it's worked to perfection so far. Yes, sir. And special birthday greetings to Mrs. Rika Vigayan, the much better half of our floor director, Mr. June Vigayan. Meanwhile, Santos got the uh, foul of Patrimonio. Looked like a clean block, but I think he got a little bit of the arm of uh, Ramos. But uh, Otto Coy made a great play underneath to, to dish it off to Ramos. Uh, excuse me, not Ramos, Santos. You know, uh, Tim, Patrimonio pointed out in his interview with our man on the ball, Romy Quintanar, that he's excited, raring to go. Can too much excitement spoil your game, uh, even in a quality player like Alvin Patrimonio? So far, he's done well. But can that uh, destroy you? Yes, it can. It can uh, there's, a, there's an idea of playing with, um, with relaxed aggression. And uh, that's one thing Patrimonio has to do. He has to be aggressive, but he has to be relaxed. He can't uh, go out and start fouling people. You can be too hyper when you play, but he's come out and played very, very well. Much, much better than I, I really thought. I thought he had the first game jitters, and apparently he hasn't had any of that. Of course, Alvin, a great veteran of a number of uh, Philippine national teams, call from afar, and he continues to sizzle. Atoiko hits seven points already, has hit seven points already, and we have a 53-52 ball game. Great taste is in front. I liked your comment earlier when people started uh, cheering for the Pure Foods team. People felt <laughs> that, Ray, that Pure Foods was already in the lead, but not so. Meanwhile, underneath, there was a lot of action. And a foul has been spotted. Atoy Ko guilty of that foul, reaching for the sky there. Well, one thing about Atoy Ko, yeah, I remember when he played uh, for the CRISPR team in the later, start, play, later phases, he started to learn how to play defense. Early in his career, he couldn't play defense at all. Now he's starting to learn a little bit. And he realizes that defense comes from hustle. And he really hustles on defense now. He picks up some silly fouls, but it's usually because of effort. You know, a lot of people don't like to play defense because uh, it's a hard work. Patrimonio is smothered inside. And Atoy Ko got an elbow in the face. He hasn't come down to court yet. Let's see if they recognize it and call a 30-second timeout. He's holding on to his uh, right side, the right side of his face. Oh, Number of rejections resulting in the ball moving into the pure foot side of the floor. 
Here's Alvin looking inside. Diagonal cross-court pass over to Heller Alau. Capasho wanting to post up against Atoiko. Here's Subalde. And off the dribble, we have contact. That's one person who's made a good recovery from his knee injury. Came out uh, firing against uh, San Miguel. Played a good game against San Miguel. Didn't play a lot of minutes, but they're bringing him back slowly. But he seemed to respond to his knee injury very yes, well. Yes, sir. As you pointed out, the knee a basketball player uses his knee a lot. His knees, for that matter, a lot. So you have to make certain adjustments, like what Terry Saldana did earlier tonight. In that victory by Alaska over the Narp. He's got, oh, what a great, spectacular shot by Freddy Ubalde. Speaking of the devil, <laughs> you make us look good, Freddy. Atoiko. Here's Bernard Fabiosa. Cesar patiently looking for the open space. A little bit of a mismatch there, Al. Hubale against Cesar. Cesar finally realized and took it straight to the basket. Hi, Good. hi, Freddy. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, goodbye, Freddy. <laughs> <laughs> Better said. Drive by Alvin. He lost control, and here is Santos. Ooh. So that is a backing violation. It was a close call. Very close. Uh, we're going to see it again on slow-mo, I think. Santos made a good idea. He had a, the right idea passing off to someone else going down the court. They didn't want him to handle it. Here we go. Here's the slow-mo. He throws it. Mm, and very yeah, close. it looked like Santos' back foot was on the line when he caught that ball. But it was a very close call. 55-54. A one-point lead enjoyed by the great taste. Instant milk masters. Capacho. Ubalde plucks it away from his former Christmas teammates. And Atoiko says, take that. And Atoiko again got an elbow in the face. Oh, great pass by Bernard Fabiosa. Alan Kaidik completing that play. Atoiko still holding his cheekbone. He's three times, uh, three times down the court, he got an elbow in the face twice. I mean, guys, we don't have to renew acquaintances with a lot of uh, slaps in the face and things like that. Under the basket, Atoiko got... Charged with a foul, Atoiko will give his second personal foul. Solis will come in, and we also have for this round. Atoiko slapped with a technical foul. I didn't see that. I guess he was mentioning something to the referee that the referee didn't like. And that allow and Kapashi will move out, and Solis and Israel report in. Do you believe we're going to have a foul shot? See, one of the things uh, Fernandez does very well is that he rewards players. And uh, Henry Lau played a good first half, so he rewarded him by letting him start the second half. He's now out of the ball game, but uh, I think that's one of the reasons a lot of players like playing for Mon Fernandez. Excellent close-up shot of Freddy Hubaldi as he took that foul shot, which he missed. And there's Baby the Lupin moving over to the side of technical assistant. Counselor Narciso Bernardo. Patrimonio. Cesar. Patrimonio was there. Odiniera has it. Ubalde recovers it. Patrimonio bangs it in. Good recovery from Patrimonio. Not expecting that pass from Ubalde. Kind of threw it into his chest. He was able to recover and uh, put up the two points. Atoiko from three point distance. No connection. Patim, three-point country. No, just a two-pointer. It's no good nonetheless. Great taste is doing a good job of getting back on defense. Uh, they shut off the lane, so Israel decided to stay at, uh, set up and take that three-pointer, although it ended up being a two. You saw Philip Cesar tell Fabiosa, slow it down, slow it down. However, he lost control of the leather. And a great ball-hawking effort that time by Fabiosa. He caused that turnover. I tell you, the ball looks slippery to me. It looks really slippery to me. Cesar pops from right, can't get it to drop, and a battle for the loose ball picked up by Solis. Solis leading a four on two. What will he do? Go to Freddy for a miss, but there's going to be contact. Freddy, well, they spoiled my wedding <laughs> rhythm there. <laughs> What's he going to do for two, I was about to say. Nonetheless, it is, <laughs> it is 7.37. Remaining in this ball game, 57-56. What we have yet to see, uh, Tim, 
is the opportunity for Ramon Fernandez, together with Cotinera and Patrimonio, in what could be the most awesome front line ever here on the PBA. That's right. So all three of them out in this court together. Oh, if you, we, we can get a shot at Mon Fernandez, so we can see the uh, get a honey shot sometime. We can see the the bandages that they put across his face. The big X like marks the spot. Part see if we can get that later. Definitely not part of his usual makeup, huh? <laughs> 58-57. Pure Foods by a point. This is Sev Sarmenta working with Tim Cohen this evening for your continuing coverage of the PBA All Filipino Conference on the Olympic Network. As Fabiosa saw a small opening. Solis with that sheepish grin on his face. Second foul. Ubalde moves out. What a great game by Freddy Ubalde. Patrimonio gets a rest and Yango will replace him. Patrimonio was the leading uh, scorer for, Patri uh, for Pure Food so far. Yes, 14 points. And here's the guy who does the tough jobs. That was a big defensive gem by Fabiosa earlier. And <laughs> there was that. There we go. There we go. X marks the spot. Looks like he's uh, kind of like a bullseye for... Yeah, <laughs> like an uh, uh, ice hockey player. <laughs> Hear that? There's, there's treasure behind those eyes. Action continues. Here's Cordinera getting Fabiosa flying. Can't get it to drop, and Cristobal is there. Fabiosa off and running. You know, whenever Fabiosa starts the break, it's as if he's moving out of the starting blocks in the century dash. That's a true. He's, in my opinion, the quickest player in the NBA, uh, PBA. Excuse me. He could well play there, you know. <laughs> With that speed. And there's a foul by Cristobal. Foul, Cristobal. Just like Spud Webb, huh? Yeah, he is. He is. He's got an extremely quick first step, and then once he gets going, there's nobody faster. Straight ahead speed is just incredible. Sol is trying to organize things. Lastimosa, who is back on the floor. Codinera together with Yango and Pedim Israel. Here's Solis bouncing it over. Codinera, six on the shot clock, and a foul. Knee contact by Santos. I was just going to say that Santos made a good defensive move there. Cut off the baseline in Cordonera, but he, he bellied it up a little bit too close to him, and the referee caught him for a foul. But good defensive effort by uh, Joel Santos. Tough man to guard. Nearing the halfway mark of this third quarter. This has been a great encounter so far, and undoubtedly it will be so till the very end. Alan Kaidik wisely waiting for the rest of the team to assemble and organize on the floor. Atoy Kot tries to shuffle. Big man Jerry in front of him. Fabiosa looks at the clock. Nine on the shot clock. Cristobal decides to pop. Miss. And Santos with a big, big connection. Nice roll of the... Santos is really playing great. Uh, made a nice roll of the basket after uh, Carpio went around his screen. Not Carpio. Uh, who was that? Cristobal. Santos already with seven points and six rebounds in the yeah, contest so far. Fabiosa. Wise move by Fabiosa. Atoy with a shuffle, a twist. Nothing there. Rebound battle. It's going to be a loose ball foul on Padim Israel. Loose ball foul, Israel. His third. Padimia will get a rest. Fernandez back in. Not after this timeout. Timeout, the islands we conclude our schedule of games tomorrow with the uh, final contest in Limpa City Batangas okay thank you very much yes, sir. Thank all you. right back to the panel quick steal and thank you very much Romy Quintanar Quintanar let's make that clear and uh, you did not miss any piece of the action and a big three-point shot by the fortune cookie and all of a sudden it's an eight-point lead by great taste Atoy Ko with a second three-point shot with only 457 left in the uh, third quarter Juan Fernandez, as we pointed out, back on the floor. Cabato is also there. We have a foul spotted by referee Tito Varela. Cristobal, guilty of that foul, acknowledging it. 66 to 58, great taste is in front. Cristobal, guilty of his third. The referees have done a very, very good job in the, so far in this uh, ballgame. 
But uh, let me point out that uh, Great Taste has seven team fouls to Pure Foods, only three. So any foul after this is going to be two shots for um, Pure Foods. Fernandez missed it, and then Yango followed it up. You know, at this point, I'd like to ask you, Tim, I'm sure Mon Fernandez is getting uh, a little distracted with that X on his face. Yeah, you, it, it, it kind of destroys your vision and also your depth perception. Especially if that bandage has a shadow right in front of it. It is not the latest in uh, <laughs> sunglass fashion. And also, it just uh, you're also aware of it. And you're kind of kind of throwing your face away from the action and not really looking your shot straight into the basket. But you're afraid it might get hit again. Right after this game comes our choice for the Jollibee Best Player of the Game. Don't miss it. Good decision there by Atoy Ko. He recognized that Yango was on him. A mismatch. Uh, Yango came out to stop the outside shot. Ko used his quickness and went around him. Picked up the foul. Now they're trying to even it out there on the team fouls. Pure Foods now with five. 66 to 60. Great taste. Enjoying a six-point advantage as we move into the final four and 17 of this third period. The stumble from 18 feet won't drop in. Here's Lastimosa. Solis. Yango, Fernandez on the other side of the floor. There's a foul on Fabiosa as he tried to ball hawk. Third personal, and that pushes Great Taste over the limit in this quarter. On the other hand, Pure Foods has just five. Ramon Fernandez, the playing coach of the Hot Dogs. You know, a lot of people would think that that's a silly foul by Fabiosa reaching in and fouling Ramon Fernandez, but that's part of Fabiosa's game. He has quick hands. He likes to reach in, try to get the quick steal and start a fast break. So not a bad foul in that situation. The first set of points by Ramon Fernandez, three-time MVP. Atoico gets everybody jumping up like yo-yos into oh. there, and Atoico with a big basket. Oh, what a great move. Everybody left him. Both played, two teams, double, two guys double teamed him. And they both went to the find the other man, not knowing one wouldn't stay. Co recognized it, kind of nice, easy layup. They went up, down, up, down, and Atoico just spun around them. Fernandez sneaks inside, nothing. Tabatu cannot hang on to it. He does so now. Good board by the uh, Great Taste team. Again, we talked earlier that Great Taste had the problems of rebounding, but not tonight. They're really hustling. Kaide gets the bucket! Got away with the walk as well. Israel guilty Here we of go. that foul. Yes, yes. There's the walk. One, two, three, four. And then he goes up and gets the foul. But that's part of basketball. Referees can't catch them all. We have a timeout. Fernandez, Marisa Fernandez. Earlier, Kaide completed a three-point play. And Pure Foods got another back bucket on the other side of the floor. Atoiko with a shuffle. Alev Kaidik from 15. No, and Lastimosa takes it away from everybody. Oh, but Fabiosa does it on the other side and scores. Great taste is really into this ball game, Tim Cohn. Yes, they're really moving their feet. They're getting back on defense. Fabiosa is really the key so far defensively. And we have a foul spotted. Foul cool. Onato Iko, his fourth. You remember how Fabiosa keyed the uh, Great Taste team early, picking up a bunch of loose balls, getting back on defense, making a couple steals early in the first quarter. That kind of set the tone for Great Taste throughout this ball game. And here he comes up with a big steal. Pew Foods a big four-point turnaround. Solis, meanwhile, it's an opportunity <laughs> to bring, uh, add to their production. Onato Iko will get a rest I do believe and Santos will move in Santos has played well for great day so far Solis well they're gonna have a big front line now with uh, Santos and Cabato in the game at the same time that means uh, Cristobal will move to a, a small forward or Kai Dick will move to uh, off guard rather 2 and 20 left in the third Fabiosa he has been hustle, excitement, all rolled into one. Bernard, looper won't drop. Volleyball situation. Cristobal with a big bucket. Oh, and, and he's a, hurt. He's hurt his knee or something. I don't know. Maybe he got a Charlie horse. 
but they can't call timeout until they get possession of the ball. Fernandez banging bodies with Cabatu. The struggle for the leather. Now there'll be a timeout called. Oh, Las Dimas and Fabiosa, like tigers in a pit. Struggling for that loose ball. And it'll be a loose ball foul on Las Dimosa. Second personal foul. And uh, they're not going to, uh, it looks like Cristobal's all right. He's going to stay in the ball game. No 30 second timeout needed. If you look at the score in the front line, the backcourt, you can see great taste. That's a big edge in the, in the front line. Something you just wouldn't have believed at the beginning of the game. We have a foul spotted. Illegal defense. Oh, Another yes. Illegal defense. Thank uh, you, Tim. That'll be the third on them, right? That'll be the second the technical, technical foul. Field two, for illegal defense. Pardon my ignorance, Sev. I'm not sure about this rule. But uh, how many illegal defenses are you allowed in the PBA? I know in the NBA, once you get your third, or either your third or your fourth, the coach is ejected from the game. I don't know what the rule is here. Do you? We'll double check. We'll double check on that. We'll clarify on the number of uh, illegal defense uh, rules. It, that is a very valid point. I've, so never, I've never really thought about it before. It just okay, we'll double check up. on that. That is a uh, rarely happens, you know. So yeah. we'll have our production executives check it out quickly. Boy, great taste of this place and great basketball. Twelve point lead now for Great Taste. They're really starting to take it to Pure Foods. Kai Dick has ten points out of his twenty-two. All of them here. All of those 10 points here in the third quarter alone. A minute and 22. Cristobal has four personal fouls. Have we seen Tuadis so far in the second half? I don't remember him being in yet. No, sir. No, sir. Not yet. Yeah. He's getting a good rest on the bench, too. It'll be key, maybe key in the fourth quarter. Meanwhile, Cristobal gets a well-deserved rest. And Philip Cesar reports back in. Henarela will check in as well. There you see the statistics on Lestimosa, the first conference. 89% from the free throw line in the first conference, an average score of 16.5. You had a very good point also about Lestimosa that he wasn't really quite high as far as playing time was concerned. Yeah, we mentioned about Kai Dick being the first in scoring in the open and uh, only 18th in playing time. Lestimosa, on the other hand, was fifth in scoring in the, in the, of all the locals in the Open Conference and only 17th in average play minutes. So a bunch of big shooters in this game. Explosive shooters, that is, yes. Tap out. Fabiosa will get a breather as we see the re-entry of Pido Rancho on your screens, the legendary Baby De Lupin. Shouting instructions. Masterful game plan so far by Baby De Lupin. I wouldn't have thought you've seen so much of Santos and Gabatu in the ball game, much less together. They're doing a really good job. And Aralau with a big steal with 42 seconds to play. Ramon pumps but travels. He claimed he was pushed, but it will stay. Exciting sequence there, basketball. Good defense both times by the big man of uh, first by Santos. He made uh, Patrimonio make a bad pass and then Cabato forced uh, Fernandez into a travel. Israel all over Kaidik. Pido stops. General now guilty of the foul. That'll be two shots for Peter Renzo. I have the uh, sinister feeling that Pure Foods might not have been prepared for the intensity of great taste in this particular ballgame. I think you're exactly right in exclamation. Uh, Pure Foods, I think, were so involved in getting Patrimonio in his first game, and uh, they thought they thought probably with Patrimonio and the excitement they would generate that they'd probably have a walkover on great taste. But great taste has come out to play. 80 to 68 is our score. Hannah Ralau, Lastimosa, so far, only eight points by Jojo. They have nine seconds on the shot clock. Fernandez trying to work inside. The ball is tapped, but touched last by Jojo Lastimosa. Only seven seconds remain in this third quarter. Harencho on a 
speedy move. He'll go all the way. Good decision by Pico Arancho. It will count. And great taste ends the quarter on top, 82 to 68. We'll be right back. Fernandez just missed. We are into the fourth and final quarter of play. Great taste has really picked up intensity inside. They're really banging bodies inside. Arancho with nobody to pass to. Santos trying to keep it alive. Ends up saying, Coach the Lupin, am I doing okay? We have a quick update on. We have a change in the lineup. Meanwhile, Israel moves out. The pass show is also back. Uh, Tim, on that point we were talking about, it looks like we have a clarification already. Yeah, about that point we were talking about how many technical fouls uh, has the team allowed. Apparently they're allowed as many as they as they decide to uh, do illegal defenses, but uh, they just continue taking free throws. There's no ejection at all. Capasha with a mighty drive, nothing there, and you saw those bodies banging under the basket. Capasha charged with a personal, he's third. We are in the first minute of the fourth and final quarter, 82 to 68, if you just joined us tonight. Earlier tonight, the Alaska Milkman conquered the national squad bond for Taipei, 130 to 108. Here's Alan Kaidik. Whoa, yes sir! And the trigger man is down on the floor. Today I got a finger in the eye. I don't wanna... I was wrong earlier about Mark Fernandez, but here we see it on the replay. See him coming around that pick, getting the screen, and going up with the left hand. The problem there defensively is that they know in Alan Kaidik is left-handed. They should have been playing off his left hand. If they played off his right, Alan Kaidik was going, able to drive the basket. We segue into a pure foot timeout. They're completing the three-point play and the score stands at 85 68 great taste joy marquez uh, just finally bought, got into the ball game here in the fourth quarter he takes his first shot and he misses it but uh, he came out firing so we want to see Toy marquez working against alan k dick that's his assignment Twardless with a big bucket off a great pass by the scholar great pass by philip cesar takes good court awareness to see that uh, situation where guys uh, being fronted and great taste is all over the floor Arencio burning rubber he'll go to the hole no success rebound Marquez Patrimonio will he handle a wall great control of himself in the air he used his body as protection Tim yeah it's very good very good body control if you look at the team that Pierre Puig has out on the court right now, it's a very young team with Capacio, Cordonera, and, uh, and, and Patrimonio. The only veteran, real veteran out there is Senor Alao. And they're playing a very, very veteran team. It is a 17-point advantage enjoyed by the instant milk masters, Tuatles. <laughs> Again, we're seeing that isolation. Uh, Tuatles was taking it to Lastimosa early. Now he's taking it to Capacio. I think that uh, Mohan's going to have to get a bigger person to come out and guard uh, Tuadles. Don't let him post up so easily. 17 points already by Tuadles. Cesar and Tuadles saying it is secure. Let's move on. 89 to 70. Great taste. 9-13 to play. Well, one must remember that Pure Foods is known as a fourth quarter team. Although they're, it's a big deficit, they have come back from those types of deficits before. So this game is not, it's not over by any means. Off balance shot by Kaidik, nothing. And it allow. Gets it! That's a good start for a comeback. Wiley Willie has 12 in the contest. Cesar wisely facing down the floor. 
Well, great, the clock is in great taste favor right now. They've got a 16-point lead with only eight minutes left. But they've got to be careful that they keep being aggressive, keep going to the basket. Two on the shot clock, Carencho. Good blocking out by Pure Foods on that last rebound. And they're allowed, rejected, Tapal. By the Tapal King himself. And they're allowed, three, go! Six point run, Willie Hunter allows six points. Great taste, zero. Two consecutive three point shots. Nothing there, but finally a bucket. Prior to that shot, an 8-2 explosion by the Hot Dogs, anchored on those two triples by Willie Henner Alao. As you said, Tim Cohn, Pure Foods is an explosive team. They can come back. Bodiniana, Quadles, with an attempted steal, is charged with a foul. Number five on Arnie Quadles. I imagine that uh, Tuadles will have to come out of the ball game now. Changes on the floor. Kaidik will move out. Arancho. I don't think Great Taste can, can afford to lose Tuadles this early in the ball game. But uh, Baby Delapu is going to go to gamble and keep him in. Arancho, by the way, was replaced by Fabiosa. Excellent pacing by Coach Baby Delapu. But Hannah Lau comes to grief in that last attempt for three point country. Here, Cesar moving like a gazelle, but the shot is too strong. Really right now, a little bit greedy there. Should have probably set up. But once you start feeling it, you want to take it any time you can. Philip to his compadre, who tries to sneak in, and Marquez. Totoy Marquez, guilty of that personal. He's first. 91-76, great taste. That's three team fouls now for Pure Foods. Only one for great taste. That could be key down the stretch. Almost even on the bench scoring. Players coming off the bench contribute the cause of each team. Blue ball, according to referee Varela. You know, I really can't help but think that ball is slippery, but you know, the players don't seem to be complaining, so apparently it's not. But uh, gee, it just looks slippery to me for some reason. Maybe it's the glow of the lights, you know? Yeah, it could be. Fabiosa. Directing traffic. Here's Zato Iko. Call with 12 already in the contest. Kabato trying to provide a pick. Only two seconds. Oh. Too strong on the pass, Tim. Yeah, there was only two seconds left in the shot clock at that time anyway. I doubt they would have gotten the shot up. And time for Marquez. I think maybe Delupa is going to have to call a timeout. Put uh, it down to a 13-point lead from a 18-point lead. Fabiosa. It somehow, Great Taste has lost some of that aggressiveness uh, offensively and defensively at this point. Trying to play the clock a little bit too much. That is a very valid point. While on the other hand, Pure Foods is trying to step on the gas pedal. Exactly. They're really pushing the ball up the court now. Henner Lau. One of the spark plugs. Patrimonio's triple. Air ball. Fodinera was there. Nothing. Hot dog struggled for the ball. It will be... Staying over there on the white side of the floor. A controversial call there. Looked like it slipped out of the hands of Cordoneta. We will see the slow-mo, see if we can catch it. We really don't have the angle, but here we go. Now he gets the rebound. The two Pure Foods players are battling for the ball. It did look like it went out in favor of uh, great taste. Hard to call, too tight. Cordoneta, nothing. Marquez flying. There's going to be a loose ball foul on Ato Eko. Number five on Ato Eko. And we have a timeout. We'll be back. Fernandez follows up on a Marquez miss. It is now down to an 11-point lead with 5.15 to play. Fourth quarter. 
That is an awful lot of time left. And uh, I'm sure Baby DeLupin during that timeout said, let's go straight to the basket, just like Fabiosa did there. Let's, let's get our aggressiveness back. Let's uh, don't play the clock anymore. Look for the basket. Let the cards fall where they may. Second personnel on Ramon Fernandez. Largest lead of great taste was at 19 at 87 to 68. Has been whittled down to 11. These are important free throws for Fabiosa. Try to get the momentum back or even the momentum out. Bernard missing on his first attempt. Solis returns after... Uh, while giving Henerolao a rest, that is. Henerolao was that spark with those two three-point shots that started him on the comeback. Total of 15 points by Henerolao. Split by Bernard as we approach the final five minutes of play. 12-point advantage by Great Chase. Fernandez all the way in Hello, for two. And one. Sonny Kabata with his fourth personnel as we take another look. You can see the foul was early, but he was he had picked up his ball and he's doing his dribble. Therefore, the continuation. Good call by the referee. And uh, you notice Mon Fernandez is taking off the uh, one of the X's. He's only got a strip now instead of an X across his face. And now that lethal front line people have been talking about Patrimonio, Fernandez and Cotinera all together at the same time and Giorgio Lastimosa will also check in a little while from now uh, from now whenever there's a chance Kai Dick who has sizzled in this ball game Marquez with a big bucket Down to a seven-point ball game. Fabios has got to get back into the ball game. Great pace is losing their composure. And Twilas is going to get a technical foul if he isn't careful. He threw a towel out the court. Great pace has got to... Actually, it should have. Here we go. Referee didn't get an angle, so he's going to call a jump ball. Great Tay somehow has lost its concentration on the game. Lapsing into a number of errors. They have to regroup. Oh, good pass by Santos to Fabiosa. Yes! Wow, what a big basket. That was design play. When the ball went up, Fabiosa broke for the basket. It good tip by Cesar. Drive by Solis. Bingo! And there is a foul on Solis. Nine to three, Pure Foods explosion in the last minute. Excuse me, I'm just going to say that's the fifth team foul for uh, Pure Foods. Only three for great taste. We'll keep an eye on that. That might play a big role down the stretch. Undi undeniably so. That's for Biosa. Somehow you get the feeling that when they slow down, I'm talking of great taste, they slow down somehow Pure Foods found that as an opportunity to start moving as Kaidik attempts a three. No. Great Santos. rebound by Santos. Boy, what a key, huh? Yes, sir. You know, one of the reasons when, when great taste uh, slows down, they try to set up a play and they try to work it inside, and that gives the big guys a pure foods a chance to uh, set themselves up and defend the inside, so they have to go outside great taste, and they haven't been shooting well in this fourth quarter. A foul by Lastimosa. And if we can take a closer look at Ramon Fernandez, I do believe he has taken off the X completely off his face. We'll double check on that. Meanwhile, Kaidik spins. Fernandez tiptoes along the baseline. It is 94-87. A basket here. Might just bring this crowd to its feet, but no! Yes! Yes, now! Lastimosa, who else? Boy, what a playoff atmosphere this game has turned out to be. Final three minutes of the ball game. Fabiosa, high pass. 
Drago for the leather. Loose ball foul on Kabatu. It's a foul on Kabatu. Yes, Tim, you're right. Here's the replay. Fabioso going to the key. Had nowhere to go to. He threw it right at the knees of Santos. Santos couldn't react. And there's Kabatu pushing. Who is that? Uh, is that Cordillera all the way? Could've I couldn't tell who that was. Could have been Patrimonio, you're right. But a five point ball game. Two and a half minutes left to go. From a high of 19, down to five at this point. Lastimosa. Again, I think baby DeLupa needs another timeout. Wattless, Dean saves, no basket, the it's an offensive foul! That's going to be six on Arnie, he's out of the ball game. And there's a second look of that foul as we have a timeout. Tuesdays are cardholders night and the hot at the top faces disco. 15% discounts will be given to all gold card holders while a 10% discount for all silver card holders. It's a deal. Just bring your gold or silver cards and avail of the discounts mentioned earlier. Remember, it's cardholders night at faces every Tuesday. Faces your idea of fun. And on Sunday, our games at 4 o'clock, Pure Foods versus Shell, Ramula, timeout featuring our tribute to Bob Sadernado, a news break. And we have Burlington basketball tips, replay of the Padim Israel series, Fernandez losing possession, and there is Alan Kaidik. And in the main game later on, in the on Sunday, San Miguel Beer versus Anyahu Ram 65, Joe and Andy will be there. Last two minutes, last two minutes. Oh, big shot by Philip Cesar. Yes, sir, you were right on the ball on that particular play, Tim Cohn. Big basket by, ti uh, by Tim Cohn, by <laughs> Philip Cesar. I wish it was by me. Lastimosa, zigzags, penetrates, misses, Patrimonio, yes! There we go. There you see the difference Patrimonio adds. Lastimosa makes the uh, penetration. Kabatu with his sixth personnel, the second gentleman to move us into the area which Joe Cantada calls a showerville. Well, you know, Lastimosa drove to the basket. Here we go. We see the replay. You see the defense having to collapse on him. Alvin Patrimonio, another big guy added to the team. Another guy you have to box out. Couldn't be boxed out. Easy two points and an extra free throw to bring within uh, two points. What a comeback by Pure Foods. A fourth quarter team, as we mentioned. You hit the nail right on the head, but Patrimonio mocks the foul shot. Too strong. A minute and 35 left in the ball game. 96-93. During that time, Ed Harancio came in for Fabiosa. Near steal by Jerry Cordiniera and Solis. Saying hi to Atoiko on the bench. You know, you had a real good point there during the timeout uh, about uh, great days playing the referees. They started stopped playing the game to win and started complaining about the referees. Fabioso was one of the most guilty parties, and now Horencio has been taken in wisely by uh, De Lupin. Three point salvo, Cristobal, air ball, and there is a foul. Oh. Not a good foul by Patrimonio. Cristobal must have been about two or three feet off the three point line. Third personal foul on um, the big man out in Patrimonio, 96-93. Cristobal with undeniably two crucial charities. He misses! I was just going to say, Patrimonio had some crucial errors there. He missed the free throw and made it foul Cristobal. But if Cristobal doesn't make this free throw, all those errors go for naught. We have a timeout. We'll be back. That much time remaining. The Skarjak Affair. And again, a key to remember is that uh, Pure Food is in the penalty. Great Taste has one to give before they go into penalty. 
And the situation on timeouts. Both squads have two timeouts each left to call. Lastimosa to Alvin Patrimonio. Over to Giorgio. Hang time. Contact. I think that shot would have been a little bit short. That's why the referee did not call goaltending. But uh, Philip Cesar got up there and blocked the shot a little bit late. But it uh, didn't have any chance to go in anyway, so the referees did not call the goaltending. Santos guilty of his third personal foul. Team fouls, seven for both squads. Crucial Charities. Giorgio, yes. As we pointed out earlier, against San Miguel Beer last Sunday, 12 out of 12 by Giorgio Lastimosa from the 15-foot line. A 6 for 6 today. 18 consecutive free throws made by Giorgio Lastimosa. Let's see what they decide to do here. They're going to try to rub uh, Kai Dick off the screen and try to pop to a Kai Dick free. Cristobal accepts the leather. Less than a minute. Six on the shot clock. Cesar looks at the clock. Stretches. Misses. Lastimosa. Trying to ball hawk. Harencho. Fernandez. Pops. Passes off to Lastimosa. Hang time. Nothing. Cristobal with a crucial steal. And a foul. Wow, what a fast and furious action. Very good, Seth. <laughs> wow, what a what a what a check, what a <laughs> what a game! Yeah. Here we go. Here we see the elbow. This well, and probably got away with a little bit of a walk there. He passes it out to Lastimosa. Lastimosa go over to the basket. He'll get banged. No call. The ball go free. Cristobal finally get a handle on it. Then boom, he gets knocked down by. Uh, Solis and now Solis and Cristobal go to the line for two very crucial free throws. Earlier he split on his charities. We have some very, very vocal great taste fans here tonight. Now we can hear them. 98-95. Yes! And a timeout has been called by Pure Foods. Final 32 seconds of action, 99 to 95. If you just joined us, great taste led by as large as 19 in this ball game. Lost control somewhat towards the start of the fourth and the end of the third as Fernandez penetrates. Misses Lastimosa. Oh, yes. big basket. Boy, is he something else? Every clutch basket he seems to make. We have a timeout by great taste, but we will hang on to the end. Down on Cordonera and try to get Cesar out. And that's the foul. And there's the foul on Santos. I told you Tim Cohn understands Tagalog perfectly. <laughs> foul on Ramon, he's third over the limit. And Santos, now the rookie, is in the limelight. Now you, you know that he's feeling the pressure right now. He's played a tremendous game. No matter if he makes his or misses, he's still played a great game. And boom. Clutch shot. Now it takes a three-point shot to tie. Misses the second. 100 to 97. Baseball pitch. Lastimosa. Yes! Oh. With a foul! With a foul! Santos guilty of his fourth personal foul. There you see the play. Lastimos is going to fake left, go up the baseline. Santos is going to go up and try to block the shot. And you saw it. Big free throw. Timeout by great taste. We are all we are all tied up and we shall hang on to the air. 100 all. It's as close as you can get. Yeah, uh, inbounds. He's going to go down and screen for Kai Dick uh, and Fabios is going to screen for Cesar. They're going to pop out and get the ball. Then they'll work for one shot. You'll notice that Santos is now out of the ball game because they don't want him to be fouled and have to take the two free throws. 
Very quick team out there by Straight Taste. Accepting the ball. They're going to try to work for one shot. Arancho. Bidó with Fernandez right in front of him. Six seconds. Fabiosa. Arancho can put it up. Yes! Yes! It counts. Yes! The ball game is over. Yes! Yes! Do you? Do you believe in miracles? Yes! What a comeback! What a comeback from a comeback! So, panalo po kami. So, I hope you like this video I shared. So, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. And click that notification bell for more updates. See you sa next one!